Hello? Hello? This is the Matthew Aaron Show. Who am I speaking with? This is Chaz Palminteri. Oh, my. Oh. Woo. <laughs> Chaz, how you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Okay. How was your holiday weekend? Oh, it was good and relaxing. Okay, very nice. I'm here with my pal, Len Canada. Len, are you there? How are you? All right. How you doing, guys? Good, good, good. good. Yeah, I have a bunch of questions for you, and we want to plug your Atlantic City dates, and we want to plug uh, the new restaurant, which I'm really curious about, too. But, Chaz, for our listeners and for anyone who may not know your background, could you briefly summarize how you got involved in the entertainment business? Because <laughs> I know you yes, I think Well, I always wanted to be an actor. I mean, what could I say in uh... – uh, when I was 10, 10 years old, I wanted to be an actor. It was something that I always wanted to do. And uh, when I became 17, 18, I started singing. I got into a band. I had long hair in a band. And I sang all over, but, and I kept studying acting and coming into the city. Finally, I auditioned for the actor's uh, studio uh, with Lee Strasberg, and I got in. And uh, But my singing career kept me out of it for years, going on the road with the bands. Then finally, in 1979... Lee Strasberg said, well, if you really want to be an actor, you've got to starve a little bit. I quit the bands, and I got on uh, Broadway in 1982 in, as an understudy, and uh, and I started doing off-Broadway. And then in 1988, I wrote A Bronx Tale because uh, I, uh, I really wanted to uh, showcase myself. And then, uh, bam, it exploded, and the rest of the say is history. That's pretty brief, I guess. And, well, and then, Chaz, <laughs> what was that now – Robert De Niro, uh, yes. he was uh, he was instrumental in your career, and could yes. you could you give me an idea of why? Okay, sure. Well, when I wrote a Bronx Tale, the it was a one man show. Uh, that's what I wrote. It was a one man show, and, and I did all the characters on stage by myself. I put it up in L.A. at the time, and it just exploded. It became the hottest property in New York and L.A., and it just was off the charts. Everybody wanted it. They haven't seen anything like that since Rocky at the time. They say it happens once every 15, 20 years like that. Uh, and the last time that did happen was Rocky, where everybody wanted the script. And it was the same way with Bronx Tale. They saw me perform it. They loved it. But they really didn't want me. They wanted to put – they wanted by uh, – play they wanted my writing they wanted to right. take the rights of my show and make it a movie and they said look you're great but i'm sorry you're not famous and uh, you're not a star and it's not going to happen and i said well you're mistaken because i wrote it and i own it and i'm not selling it and i said either i play sunny and i write the screenplay or i'm not selling it to no one and so they offered me two hundred fifty thousand dollars to walk away i had two hundred dollars in the bank at the time and i said no I said, I'm not doing it. I play Sonny. I write the screenplay. And about three weeks later, they offered me a half a million dollars. The same thing. They doubled the offer. Again, I said no. And at that time, the crowds were coming into the theater. We had to move into a bigger theater because the crowds got so big. Every writer, director, producer, studio head were coming to the theater uh, to see it. It was insane. I mean, all the stars, every, every major star wanted to play Sonny. Every major actor, every writer wanted to write the screenplay. It was just incredible. And again, I said no. Then finally, uh, I got offered $1 million to walk away oh. and I, uh, by the studio. And again, I wanted to play Sonny, and I wanted to write the screenplay. And again, they said, no, it can't be done. It'll never happen. No one will ever do it. And I said, someone will do it sooner or later. I don't believe you. And they said, why? I said, because it's too good. That's why. Yep. And then uh, about a, two weeks later, Robert De Niro walked into the theater, saw the show, met me backstage, came in my dressing room and said, look, this is incredible. It's a great show. You're great. You should play Sonny. You should write the screenplay. And if you shake my hands, that's the way it'll be. And I shook his hand, and that's the way it was. Wow, that's and and both Lenny and I have seen the play. Now we now we saw it recently, Len. Correct? You saw it last year or two years ago? Well, whenever the last time you were in Chicago, I'm I'm not quite sure the date. Oh, uh, that's but... about two years. Yeah, about two years ago. Yes. Now, okay, Jazz, correct. Yeah. Jazz, did the play change at all? Uh, because we both thought it was great, but was it different before the movie? No, and same. So it's the same thing. Same thing. That's great. That's I'm I'm very glad that I didn't miss anything. <laughs> don't change anything. Don't change anything. No, I don't. I don't change anything. You know, I mean, uh, 
I had uh, Jerry Zachs directed this version of it, and he was great. It's actually better. It's even better, I mean, I think. It's just great. I mean, the show is just, you know, I worked so hard on it. I, when I wrote it, it took me a year to write it, and I, I performed it for my theater workshop. So I, I, I kept each week I kept writing 15 minutes and taking the best out of the 15, taking the best out of the 10 minutes. And then after almost a year, I had this tight, tight show, you know, and it just works. It's brilliant. Um, you know, because I'm an actor, and I just can't imagine what playing 18 roles is like. And <laughs> Well, it, it, you know I what? It's, how it's you do great, it. and it's exhilarating. It's like riding a race car and getting in a Ferrari. The only thing is you, you just have to rehearse a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do you ever get confused? Do you ever accidentally do another character while you're supposed to do, like, Sonny or whatever? Not really, but you know what I do do? It's, it's funny you said that. What, the only times, and it happens, it happened to me about three times. What I do, this one scene between uh, Lorenzo and Sonny, and it's the scene about giving the money back, I, I, I'm so intense that I actually say something and then I wait for the answer to come back at me. And then I, re I, I take a longer pause and I go, holy shit, wait a minute. I'm the one to explain the other guy. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that about two or three times in all the performances that I've done. Where I've said it, then I've just paused too long, waiting for the answer to come back. Oh, that's so oh, good. <laughs> I know, kind of weird. Oh, now, now tell me something else. I heard a, I heard a story. Now you have a, how many kids do you have, Chad? I have two kids. You have two. Two, two, two. Dante and Gabriella. Yes. Okay, and I heard Dante's going into music. Is that true? Yeah. Yes, yes. He he has his own band called Camus, and he's the lead singer. He plays guitar, and uh, they're terrific. They're just terrific. That's great. Now, which films? I, I think I've seen you. Now, was it The Dukes I saw you singing in? Yes, yes. Yes, you have a great voice. Well, thanks. Yeah, well, I started out as a singer, you know. and uh, that, well, Actually, I was an actor first, but my singing career, I started making money as a singer. But I, I enjoy singing very much, yes. Yeah, and then after Bronx Tale, your career just kind of blew up. And then, yeah. and then it, it was like a bullet over Broadway. I mean, right after Bronx Tale with Bullets, like, which I got nominated, and Usual Suspects, and it just blew up. Big yeah, how, how how was it working with Woody Allen on Bullets great. Over Broadway? Really, really great. I had a it? great time working with him. Yeah, no, and you got the Academy Award nomination for the yes, film. Yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> and you're great in that film. Your character's name, I believe, is Cheech. And, Cheech. Uh, yes. Oh, it was it was great. Is that and Cusack's in that one too? Is yeah, John. Uh, that, was, that was a great cast. I think yeah. we got nominated for like. I don't know, thirteen Academy Awards for the for the movie. I think something yeah, just, like that. Justly so, and I, I thought Usual Suspect should have been nominated too. That was a great film. Yeah, well, that won well, it won Academy Award for best best uh, right. screenplay. Right, but yeah. I think the acting awards that I was expecting it to. Right. Yeah, there well, were some, there were some great roles in that. Great roles in that. Great. Um, do you get a lot of people coming up to you about Usual Suspects on the street? Oh yeah. Because it's a big cult movie now. Big, big movie. Yeah, I get Bronx Tale, Usual Suspects, uh, Bullets, Analyze This, those those four a lot. Oh, yeah. we had Peter Tolan on a few weeks ago, and Peter, yeah. and he's the best, and Analyze This was phenomenal. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. We love that movie. We love you in that role. Oh, now, thanks. What, what was that like, Analyze This? You worked with Harold Ramis, Billy Crystal, Robert yeah. De Niro again. Oh, How just was fun guys. You know, I mean, just fun. I mean, that whole thing at the end when... When I do this Mikey Gaga and all this other stuff, and <laughs> we were riffing on that, and then then Billy just went off on a riff of his own, you know, and that was all kind of ad lib, and it was just terrific. I mean, uh, it was just a funny movie. That that funny. seemed classic when you guys are sitting around at the end and acting like a mobster. It was right. so good. Lenny, what's your favorite scene from Analyze This? For, from an, it's Analyze That, not Analyze oh. This. Oh, which it, it's the second than that. <laughs> No, analyze yeah, I think it was this a, is the first one. Yeah, analyze. Right, the right, first okay, one. no, it is. I'm sorry. Analyze um, this is the first one. Analyze that is the second. He just like that, analyze the, that because of the buffet. <laughs> that was a good thing. No, but my favorite scene is the the um the interplay between you and De Niro on the phone. Oh, about yeah. that. He's gonna hit us with this closure thing. I want to know what it was. I was dying yeah, laughing. That was, a, that was a great line. That was written. That was a wonderful line written. Yes. Well, what were, what are some of your favorite lines you've done, Chaz? What are some of the lines that stick with you that you're like, I can't believe I got to deliver that line? 
Oh God! I, you know, well, well, some of the lines that I wrote and delivered in uh, yeah. obviously in the Bronx Tale. I've been, I've been, I mean, I hear that all, for twenty years, uh, almost twenty years. I constantly hear, you know, when I get on an airplane and uh, they shut the doors and all of a sudden the pilot, <laughs> the pilot knows I'm on. He gets on and he goes, "Now you just can't leave." <laughs> I hear that all the time. I hear, "Is it better to be loved or feared, or thrown in the bathroom, or I've been mushed?" Uh, I, I hear I, I hear those lines all the time, and also uh, uh, in Usual Suspects, I hear uh, I'm smarter than you. Uh, I hear uh, uh, some of some of the lines that I said in there, and and obviously in Cheech, uh, you know, um, God, I'm trying to think of the ones in Cheech. There's a, there's a whole bunch of them. I can't think of them right now, but it's just amazing how uh, uh, some of the lines just work. You know, they just people remember them, and same through the culture of American society. How great was it, Chaz, for you to do, and I mean, I, I don't even know if you're credited in the role, but Night at the Roxbury. No, I'm not credited. I, I, I didn't want to be. I wanted it to be a total surprise. It was. You know, <laughs> I love doing that. I, I, wait a minute. That's another line. I hear, I'm walking down, and all these kids go, always go to me, hey, did you grab my ass? Did you grab my ass? <laughs> I hear that all the time. All the time. Because uh, I just love that role for you because I'm like, finally, Chaz gets to cut loose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and I did cut loose in that one. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that was great. Now, you know what is another movie that I bet you get asked about a lot is Pool Hall Junkies. Pool Hall Junkies, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's a classic. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a small film. It's one of those yeah. independent projects that just took off. And uh, how was it working with you and Chris Walken on one side and the other? I mean, that, that yeah, was... Yeah, well, that's, that's great. I mean, Chris, I, I, you know, we're good friends, and I have always wanted to work with Chris in something. And uh, finally we had this big scene, and he's, you know, he's just fabulous. I mean, Chris is, you know, he could read the phone book, and he really, you just listen. You know, he's so interesting, and he's got his own rhythms and his own cadence, and he's just so interesting to watch and to 